All righty, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Well, the book... Oh, let me get my copy. The book is in stores now. It's called... Um, oh, God. Sorry. Confessions of a Video Vixen by Karen Steffens. From this point on, we'll refer to her as Superhead. Oh. That's what she named herself. And here she comes by herself. You look like you've been crying a little bit or up late or you're getting high. Oh. One of the two. Or, or angry? No, actually, I'm really busy. How I'm are on you? Tour. It's nice to, to, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Now, keep, stay with the microphone. You will have no problem doing that. Just stay with the microphone. <laughs> I'm get my okay. big ass in this chair. Well, it's not that big. I mean, you're not, you're not a big woman. You oh. Breast implants. Yes. Yeah. How, now, who paid for those? Um, I did, eventually. Okay. When did you get them? Or your first set? Is that your first set? This is my first set. I'm going to go get my second set. Um, I've had him for like seven years now. I got them right after my son was born. He's seven and a half. Yeah. You got to gotta re. Uh, you gotta change those every seven to ten seven years. Seven to ten years. So yeah. I'm going to be working on my second set. Now, will you go up? Oh, um, I'm being told not to go up, but mm. I am, I'm inclined to go up just a little. Okay. Now, what up to next? Uh, what's, what size is that? Well, this a is a full C, and it's really appropriate, but... It is, but you're inappropriate. So you should probably, I mean, wear it. I'm a little politically incorrect. Yes, yes. yes. So so wear that. Yeah, do a day. Yeah. I would what say... What about I yours? Would, I would say, yours are great These are the, huge. This is my second ones, but mm -hmm. I'm 5'11", yeah, and yeah. so they fit my... They're double Ds, but they don't look they like totally double Ds on me. They entire body, yeah. And it's my second set. Yeah. Because my first set I had for the seven years, and then when my son was born, mm. I went and rotated now he's four yeah so and i didn't go up i just stayed you know with what i was uh what, with what i was in yeah. and i got under the muscle now why are you taking a bracelet because off? it makes a lot of noise and i don't and it distracts me it's a tiffany bracelet with that so with the um with the circle that says yeah. tiffany who did anybody give that to you no i bought that okay i bought everything i got on okay um <laughs> my hair <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Superhead is in the studio. Her book is in stores now. Uh, do you have a, a regular job? Do I have a regular job? Yes. I've never, I've never held a regular job. I've, I, I just haven't. I've had regular jobs mm -hmm. for a couple weeks at a time, mm -hmm. but with raising my son by myself and all the demands that I have as a, as a single mother, and mm -hmm. with um, you know being a high school dropout, I just had a lot of problems maintaining our bills and childcare, all those things. So I never, I never kept a regular job. You, and you found it financially more lucrative to. Um Mm. To superhead it. Yeah, well, it, I find it more lucrative to, at the time, be a stripper, to date um, wealthy men. Yeah, it's just really, really tough. I and mean, people know all over the place how tough it is to be a single mom. Yes. But I had a lot of disadvantages, never finishing high school, never going to college, never, be, not, never being allowed, you know, when I was with G, G-Rap, just never being allowed to go to school, never being allowed to get a job. I had so little experience. Now, how old are you now? I'm 26. And, and how old were you when you met G-Rap? I was 17. I had just turned 17. And how did you meet him? Um, through a friend I was a dancer at a club and um, a friend of his knew me and brought me to the house to dance privately okay. for, for Jay now at that particular time were you a dancer who was also known for giving super head no oh. at that time I wasn't I didn't know how to do it at all okay. G, uh, my relationship with G is what made me know how because he made me do it every day sometimes for two hours at a time now so he would grab your hair head violently i mean yeah, I, you know it, just it wasn't started, come a here, sexy move yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. it was kind of like your punishment yeah if i did something wrong i had to perform until he was happy and that was part of the abuse that i, that I that now I would he make you perform until he splashed off each time so therefore your jaws oh, would be each crazy time. aching each so, time so you like what's the longest professional you ever gave it was it was over two hours and i did it oh, to my crap. nose bled what? Until my nose bled. It's in the book. He made me do it until my nose bled. Oh, yeah, it was that serious. And I wasn't having a good time. It wasn't fun. And and so so would he beat you up if you toothed him or, you know? You know, we would fight and then it would be my fault. Fight but physically? We would fight physically. Physical. Let's say um, one time I broke a dish or something. Something small would happen and he just, it, and I would get my ass kicked and I'd get, you know, punched in the face or something. And then that would be my fault. Okay, and then, the dish, and, and then I had to apologize for being so inadequate and such a bad person. Yes. Then I'd have to, you know, um, service him for forever until he was satisfied, and sometimes over and over and over again. And it would, it, I don't think a day went by that he didn't get it. That he didn't get the super. Even when I was pregnant with my son, and you know, you have that awful feeling. Yes. I would cry, and he would still be in me. 
I would be literally in tears. Damn. And he would not stop. So why wouldn't you just say you have to go to the mall and leave? Like, why did you stay with him? Because at the time, and I didn't realize this until I wrote my book, mm -hmm. but um, my mother and I had never gotten along. Your mother um, is, is, comes from a superhead background herself. I, I, I think that my mother is... Yeah, I think my mother was a little trampy. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what I've heard from people that I've known her all her life. Yeah, and so, so I, I kind of learned that. That was kind of my example. All the men traipsing through our house, different people. Oh, all my sisters have different fathers. Oh, you know, you don't know who the daddy is. Oh. So the baby's born. Like that's how I saw it. And yeah. so, um. So you're a stellar success compared to how you grew up. Oh, compared to everyone in my family. Well, how old are your sisters? Are they superheads as well? Oh, oh and they will never be. Because now that I've gone through it and I figured out what's what's what. Right. Now I, I'm able to talk to them. They're 19 and I believe 17. And I, I I'm believe. able to talk to them and be These like, you know sisters. what? And I believe. I believe. Well, you know, I, I haven't seen them. I haven't been around them for a very long time. They live in Florida and I yeah. live here. Yeah. And Where I grew we, up so quickly. Where did you grow up? Well, I was born in St. Thomas and I grew up there till I was 10. My father was from Brooklyn. So uh -huh. I spent a lot of time in New York from the time I was five. Uh -huh. um, and then I was shipped off to Florida with my mother. Then I ended up in Phoenix. But always going back and forth to New York because this is where a lot of my family so is. So what are your career goals? You want this book to be turned into a movie? Well, right now we're working on the movie. We were actually working on the movie before we had the book. Uh -huh. But all the major studios knew it had to be a book first in order to, to protect rights and get the most out of it as okay. possible. Okay. Luckily, HarperCollins thought the same thing. Uh -huh. So when I get back to L.A. next week, it's time to sign the paperwork, get the movie done. And who do you want to play you? I would love Rosario Dawson. I think she can do crazy really well. And this character, my character, who I was, uh, I you, got crazy. I mean, literally, like, lose your mind, go crazy, cutting yourself with razors. Let I me see your wrists. No, I got nothing. I got nothing. I would cut... I would carve names in my arms. Does Bill Maher know? Uh, I mean, I know you're dating him now. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it here on the show. Yeah. Uh, Play from Kid and Play has been doing Chris, some morning yeah. duties. He, or, excuse me, Kid from Kid and Play Kid. has been yeah. doing some morning duties here at our flagship station, mm -hmm. everybody, on the Wendy Williams Experience Network, uh, WBLS here in New York. He's been, And he was telling me about how he and his wife and you and Bill yeah. had gone out one time and you were going, going crazy upstairs having the, oh, well, damn, I'm getting the 10987. Look, don't you go anywhere. Okay. Uh, you interview turns, walk her back to the pink room and lock the door. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. I want to see you walk out. Um, we'll be back for the next... Um, oh. oh there it is. Mm. You won't take it easy, All right. Hey, All right, Superhead's coming back in the studio. There she comes. How are you feeling so far? I'm good. I'm tired. Um, G-Rap called with his wife on the phone. Okay, good. And I understand you're looking for him. The state of California needs to talk to him. All right, are you getting your child support? No, no. How, when's the last time you received child support from the father of your only child, um, When G I lived in Phoenix for the the 10 months that we were, after we broke up, I lived in Phoenix for 10 months mm -hmm. before I came to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And he would help me out once in a while. Then I was going to nursing school mm -hmm. and working, and he would pay the rent. Um, it was like pulling teeth, but he would do it. Mm -hmm. And since I've been to Los Angeles, which has been almost six years, mm -hmm. we've got nothing. Actually, about a year ago, we got in contact with them. Actually, they got in contact with me. I think they sent like a hundred or two hundred and fifty dollars and a couple of coats for my son and okay. an outfit. Um, now, and that there, was all that we. There was a point in your career when um, uh, you desperately needed money, and all these guys yeah. that you superheaded. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody just kind of you were like blacklisted or whatnot. I mean, nobody sent you money. It almost sounds like oh. everybody was in touch with each other. Like, let's just freeze this, you know, no, hooker out. Well, what <laughs> happened? What happened is that when it was all good and I was really fun and I was everywhere. Party, right. I got everything. Mm -hmm. The moment I had an issue, when I was like, look, you know, I spent all my money on drugs and hanging out and all these other things. I, I really need just a couple of grants to get me started again. Everyone said no. The problem was I wasn't fun anymore. I was now it was an issue. Now it was a problem. A problem. Nobody wants let's that. let's continue with the problems. There was a party in Miami and you showed up with exhibit mm -hmm. and it was Puffy was at the party or it was his it was party. His party. And when he saw you come in, it was like he saw a ghost and he immediately asked you why you were there. He thought that you were there to blow up his spot. Mm -hmm. He then pulled exhibit aside and asked exhibit to get you out of the party mm -hmm. that you supposedly had pictures with your fingers up his behind. Oh. Well, that's not what he said. I think oh. the quote was that exhibit relayed to me was, you know, she'll have you on camera with fingers in your booty. And that well, that was, could not may, might not be exhibit. Maybe that's you, Puffy. <laughs> How you doing? I, I, you know, it, it's not exhibit. I'll say that. Um, okay. 
Um, so yeah, that was the quote. Whose fingers uh, did you did you uh, whose behind did you penetrate? I did, I've, I've never <laughs> I've never penetrated anybody's behind. Uh, what about a lot of behinds being penetrated? Um, but I'm not doing the penetrating. Okay, you walked in on record executives having gay sex, or one executive having gay sex with a man. Mm -hmm. um, you don't mention that person's name. Can mm -hmm. we talk about what record label? No, that'll give it away. That'll give it away. But like, I, what letter does it start I, with? Not even that'll give it away. Mm. A, don't B, start. C, don't start. D, That's gonna give D, away. D, <laughs> D, D, oh. D, D. Uh, uh, the second book. I'll cover all that in the second book. Oh, there will be a second there book. There is a second book. If you live to tell, I understand you're getting death threats. No, I'm not. Everyone is really excited and really oh. happy for me because I didn't say the things that I could have said. I think they're more relieved. Who was your worst lover? Um, I think they were all, you know, in retrospect, everybody's bad when you look back at it. But at, in that moment, I was most disappointed um, by Fred Durst. And wasn't, you know, Shaq was a little disappointing, but n Why is that? Funny. Because as, for as big as he is, he's got a you little time. You expected something more. And yeah. It was more average. Yeah. And it was just very sweaty and long. And yeah. Wet. And yeah. It, just, it was my bed was soaked. It was just a little too much. Yeah. Very yeah, basketball yeah. sex. Yeah. yeah. Do you enjoy anal sex? Oh. You know, I've never had it. What? I've never had it. I'm trying. I'm mm. trying. Well, I'll shout you know. out to all the super booties out here. We got something on Superhead. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm trying. And, you know, I don't know if we're ready for that. Was it that G-Rap just didn't want straight sex? Um, I think that G, and this is just in my relationship. I'm sure he's got a wonderful relationship now. I think that um, that was just, I know that's his thing. Mm. You know, I know everybody has their thing that yeah. they really like. I know um, Head was his thing. It probably uh. still is. I think that our relationship was just tumultuous and it was just, it became abusive. Do you one day want to be married and have children? More no, children? No, I don't want to be married. Um, I, I Because you've forward. broken up, you've, 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 you've uh, I can't say broken up so many marriages. You've, you've poached so many women's men mm. that you probably feel that turnabout will be a mother to you yeah you know i think I've already, mm -hmm. I've already gotten it back because it took me this long just to find love and yeah. i think that with all the bad relationships that was because i kept being in other people's relationships now who do you love oh i'm in love with bill we, we have a really stable really wonderful do you really think he's gonna marry you? or excuse me don't do, you, be married. do you think that she, he will uh have child with you we and don't want to have children either I, yeah, my son is perfect. I've done a good job the first okay. time around. I did it early. Is Bill part of your son's life? Like, is that? They don't need to be a part of each other's lives, uh -huh. especially not this early in the game. Uh -huh. and How I long have you been with him? Only since April. We're very Tom and Katie, very new, and you know what I mean? And so, even if Bill and I were to be together for the next few years, my son probably wouldn't meet him. It's just different relationships that need to meet to stay separate. My son is primary, Bill is secondary. How many times a week do you need to have sex? You know, I, we have sex all the time, okay. and I need it. When I'm in love, and I'm, I'm there, mm. and I'm in that moment, Bill and I can go five, six times a day, mm. every other day or more. Mm. We do it a lot. Mm -hmm. We do it a lot, and it's very, but it's because we love each other. If I didn't, I wouldn't. Now, you, you dedicate know? your book to your son. Absolutely. Um, what, 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 how old is he? He's seven. Okay, because I have a four-year-old. So you're, they're about ready to tease him on the playground for having a mom who's superhead. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that th Please, that term... Please, I'm pushing my kid to well, do it. Well, that term... <laughs> see that little boy over there? <laughs> oh, his mom's? Yeah, see, I don't, live in, I don't live in that kind of environment. And I live in L.A. Where, and my son goes to school with other celebrity kids. Uh -huh. And their moms are crackheads and heroin addicts. You know, this is Hollywood. And, and the kids okay. are different there. So we, they don't have that kind of conversation. Uh, that name never comes up. Do where, you, you know where we live. Do you blame your mother for how you've turned out? Mm, I don't blame my mother. I just really wish that... Oh God, you know, my mother, my father, they're, they're part of, you know what I mean? Everybody is what they were, you know what I mean, when they grew up. Yeah. And I really, I wish that I had a better mother. Okay. Because I would have learned things a lot faster and a lot differently if she had been a woman. Right. You know, herself. Uh, John Sally hooked you up with Shaquille O'Neal. Were you ever intimate with John Sally? No, but John, mm, 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 I, I never was, but John, I heard, John's one of the people you just don't want to be intimate with. Because? Loch Ness Monster, oh. Snuffleupagus, oh. to the point where you can't do it. So, John Wait, what I, does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, wow, yeah. he's hung like a horse. I, like a few horses, I heard. Oh. And so even John, John and I had a really good friendship, but yes. we knew we could never, even if we had a yes. thing, it, we never even pressed it, because I already heard from Shaq, actually, yes, that, that he's huge. It's not even funny. Do you do you uh, prefer an average size or, or a big size? I prefer what I have, which is, which is big. For a white man, just big for any man. Now, now a circumcised penis does that make you run? Um, circumcised, uncircumcised, uncircumcised is, is disgusting. Yeah. Because all kind of things that hide under Shut the skin. Shut up, okay. super head. Okay. Now I'm you're just... talking to the pros, man. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. That damn turtle.
turtle neck you have? Yeah, you know when it's you pull it back, this white stuff on please, the bed. That's kind of yeah. Mm. Oh no, you know it's gross. Mm. All of y'all know it's gross. Mm. It, it, it's nasty. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't recommend that here no, on the show. And it's, you know you can get diseases and things travel. So who is Papa? There's a, there's a man in your book who you refer to as Papa, and mm. you and um, who is Papa? Um, I can't say who he is. But Papa, what is he to you? Papa is the only person who, when everyone left me, when I wasn't fun anymore, Papa was the only person who never left me, who told me years ago, you got to get it together. When you stop doing this, you'll get to your next stage. And he was there from day one, five years, where he never left me, no matter what happened. And our, our relationship has changed, which is no longer sexual. But I know for a fact, if I ever needed anything in the world and he had it, he would give it to me, regardless. So, um, Dame Dash was instrumental in... in in helping yeah. you get this this book idea off the ground yeah. and whatnot. Had you and Dame Dash ever had sex? Yeah, we have. And was this um, while he was in the relationship with Aaliyah? It's after she died. God rest the dead. It was after she passed. Mm -hmm. Look at the superhead getting remorseful yeah. over here. Oh, Picture yeah. this. <laughs> we miss Aaliyah. <laughs> uh, DMX. Yes. Who, in my opinion, is just one big mess. Yeah. Uh, you you mentioned that he has dog like qualities. Yes. Uh, do do tell. Well, you know, X is really a dog, and and I mean that's why he named himself that. And if you read his autobiography, you'll find out there are a lot of reasons why uh. he takes on dog like qualities uh. in his personal life. Just even when he's hanging out, if he has an ear itch, for instance, he'll scratch like a dog. Everything he does, he does like a dog, including um, you know when we were intimate. Like he enjoyed doggy style. Doggy style, barking, growling, biting. Kind of like the animal planet, you know, like after animals do it, they bite each other in the neck and stuff like that. That's what I got, which was which was fine. It was actually very erotic and it was great. Uh, have, the you, time. have you ever gotten with a man who just it was like hung like a light switch, just like just. Yeah, that would be your, that would be your Fred Durst. Oh, Fred, okay. Yeah, that, and he and he had his um his the tip of his penis was pierced because he Ew. used to be a, a tattoo artist and a piercer. Mm -hmm. So there's two holes there, and it confuses you, and you're not really sure what to do with it. Yeah. And so I think we had that one encounter, and after that, it was like you know what, we're better off never talking again. Where's the wildest place you've had sex? I've you know um, a bunch of them. Y I, I've never done it anywhere that anybody else hasn't. I okay. mean, you know what I mean? I've never yeah. been a, a voyeur. It's just, you know, maybe on the patio, but that's regular. I noticed that um, in your book, you there are a lot of East Coast, you know, rappers and whatnot, mm -hmm. and, and, and like, no West Coast people that yeah. you blast. I mean, you know, Dr. Dre, you, you you never put a finger in that behind? I haven't, no. I'm just checking, Not me. honey. Was it me? Overall. Was it me? Okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been with West West Coast rappers. Just those two, Dre and Exhibit, I believe, were the only two. I that, believe. That's odd. I mean, I, I don't find West Coast men particularly attractive. Why is that? Just the way that they talk, the way their mannerisms were, were just totally different. Back to Ja Rule. So Ja Rule, uh, there was an episode, everybody, mm -hmm. where Ja Rule and Superhead, and apparently there was like a whole party atmosphere going on. And he was drinking and taking ecstasy, mm -hmm. and he passed out and started convulsing. And, and as opposed to accepting water to get him back together, he grabbed the Remy Martin, went oh. in the bathroom for a few minutes, threw up, came back out, took another fistful of e-pills and, and, and some more drink and, and continued the party. Yeah, that was about five years ago when he was just kind of rising up to his top. Mm -hmm. And I remember when John and I, um, and no one that we were, we just couldn't get into clubs at all. I remember in L.A., he would pay the bouncers like $300, and they'd right. be like, okay, great, get in your car and leave anyway. Right, and it was wow. about that time where we were crazy and this bunch of girls. He didn't convulse, but he came in. He left for a while. He came in in a cold sweat, went to the bathroom, threw up, threw up. I was with him, rubbing his back. Other girls didn't know what to do, and everybody was just kind of watching. And, and then, you know, he kept the point going. He rubbed his butt. His back. Oh, okay. His back. <laughs> his rubbed his back. You know, kind of got it all out. Took a couple more pills, down some Remy. We kept it moving for the rest of the night. And that was the way it was every day. Every day it was like that. Maybe 10, 10 pills a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? At that time. It was five years ago. Yeah. Kind of crazy. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. It seems like it was forever I, I question whether this behavior is still a part of your life. No. No, 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 no. My, my life has been normal. Mm -hmm. Um for about three years now. The last relationship that I had it was kind of weird, which was the Bobby Brown relationship. Yes, tell us about that. Um, what do you want to know? Well, because that was three years ago. That was three years so ago. So he was married to Whitney at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. and you clearly knew that he he's a married man. Mm -hmm. But um, that is, I would imagine, I it, that's still Bobby's fault for mm -hmm. pursuing. He's the one who knows he has the vows. From what I knew, they were separated. They didn't see each other, and within that six months, her father was ill. She mm -hmm. was in Jersey. He wasn't allowed to be with her. Mm -hmm. He was left in Atlanta by himself, mm -hmm. and so he would come to L.A. a lot, and that's how we met. Mm -hmm. And 
through me listening to their conversations during that time, mm -hmm. they were having some difficulties and they were separated. Because he would talk to her on the phone and you'd be in the yeah, room. Yeah, exactly. And I would call her house even when she was there and talk to him. And it just seemed like at that time they weren't as together. Maybe it was just because her father was dying and she was a little, you know, you know. Yeah, that, that in another space. Were you sniffing coke? Who, me? With Bobby? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't done drugs since my drug induced seizure in 2001. 2001 and who was there to, to bring you out of it? Um, I was with some people from Murder, Inc. Okay. And um, they kind of just didn't, they didn't take it as seriously as they should have. Okay, wait a minute. Back to Bobby, and then we're going to get to yeah. that. Is Bobby a good lover? Uh, no, Bobby's messy. Sloppy. Bobby was I was going to say sloppy, right? Well, at the time, he was... He was How do I see that? On, on that time, you know, he had that really big drug problem uh -huh. that comes in and out of his life, uh -huh. and he would lose bodily functions and drool on himself. Ew! You'd be super head and he'd be farting next to you know, <laughs> crapping all over you. Bobby was messy, but he had a problem. And I like to think that our friendship at that time, he really got himself better. And that was before, right before they went to that trek to Israel. So before he went, he had actually gotten clean and sober and they went to Israel. That trek to Israel wasn't three years ago. It, you were poaching Whitney's man. Just the, oh, hold no, no, on, Amora, hold ago. on. All right, one more break with the super head. We're going to lock the doors. You're staying because we're still talking. Oh, yes, we are. Okay. All right. All right. Come on, Superhead. All right. So, Superhead, in your book, you also talk about um, an episode with Jay-Z where he took a condom out and put it on to mm -hmm. receive some Superhead. Uh-huh. I do find it hard to believe that guys actually take out condoms for, for the Superhead. Do you? Yeah. That happens. A lot of people are very careful. I think Jay is a grown-up. And I, I've never seen Jay be anything more than a, a, an adult about a lot of things. Even at that time. Mm. You know? And a lot of people are very careful um, during oral sex, whether giving or receiving and enjoying sex. There are a few people that are just are not. Um, and that's sad. But a lot of them actually are. At least when I was with them. And maybe that's because of me. And I'm, I've always been a very careful person. Did, did Dame at any given point ask you in writing your book, since he was such an encourager of you writing the book, mm -hmm. to not include Jay-Z? No. No, because when Jay and I had, Jay was single, I was single, we collided a bit, I think we just tried to figure out if we fit in that intimate way and we didn't, mm -hmm. and so it happened once, once, maybe twice, I don't really remember, and then when we figured out that's not where we're supposed to be, yeah. we were just cool after that. Now, you had a movie role in Lorenz Tate's movie as his wife called A Man Apart. Mm -hmm, with Vin Diesel. And you mentioned that in your book, but you didn't mention your role as Honey in Mr. Marcus Pornflick. Oh my God! I forgot. No, about you didn't. That. No, yes, we watched I it yesterday did. in the office. Did you watch? Yes, we did. You know, Marcus and I used to date each other, and I think we did oh that. Oh my initially. God! I didn't know who he was. I had just came to LA. Uh -huh. I had been there just a few weeks, okay. maybe a couple of months. I didn't know who he was. Okay. And we kind of did it. I thought just for us. Uh -huh. And then it ended up being something else, and it ended up sending me a check at, at a time when I really needed the money. Uh -huh. And so I said, okay, no one's gonna ever see it. And here we are, five years. I still have. I've never seen it. So now you would credit uh, G Rap for. Um, giving you the skills that now pay your bills. Well, they did. They don't anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, this book, I mean, I'm sure you got a handsome, um, you know, I did, but I was making money book. before this book because Amanda Part still pays handsome royalties every quarter. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been living off of Amanda Part for a few years now. Um, would you say that, that Ice-T started out as your pimp? No. Did, not, did Ice T taught you how to shake hands? Don't give them all yourself. Give them only a part of yourself. Yeah, Just grab them by the pinky or, you know, those couple of fingers. I don't know. I've never seen Ice T in his pimp role. Okay. I've never seen that part of okay. him. I know that he has that somewhere. Yeah. But with me, with my son, he was more of my godfather. Him telling me, this is L.A. Mm. There's nowhere in the world like it. Mm. Don't be one of these other girls over here. Uh -huh. You're going to date anybody. You date someone that you've met at the Four Seasons that owns, you know, Sony or whatever, just uh -huh. you know what I mean. And so he just kind of led me in that direction. Don't be with the milkman because you're not going to get far, and you know stuff like that. That just that kind of stuff. But Ice never took from me. He always gave, and he did that for about four months, ten months before I got to Los Angeles. Four months after I got there, until he moved to New York to do SVU. Okay, now gave me what I needed to be. Well, let's move on to um, back to Murder Inc. Mm -hmm. um, Irv Gotti, a lot of alcohol, a lot of ecstasy, and Viagra with sex. Yeah. With, with sex with him, you say it was like a boxing match. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? There was something inside of Irv when we were together that I wasn't quite sure. And he was whether, married at this and time. He was married at the mm -hmm. time, and I, I'm not quite sure. Another wife to beat Superhead's ass. Well, I've, I've actually, I've actually, we've. 
this is I, I used to be in Vegas. One time I was in Vegas with Irv, his mm -hmm. wife, Ja, mm -hmm. and their wife, mm -hmm. and they know me. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, I think that we've come to this at least a few the years. The wives back. know and seem to understand the superhead. I think, is a, part I think of a lot of times when people don't realize that within the industry, wives and husbands make a decision. Okay. They know their husbands and what's going to happen, uh -huh. and they kind of just make the decision. I'm not going to love it, but I'm not going to leave you either. Right. And, and that was a decision a lot of wives have made. Okay. So while the wife is at home grieving, you're still getting nothing out of it. Like you, mm -hmm. you know. You don't have a decent, um, 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 well, I don't know, Bill Morris, I can't say you don't have a decent man in your life, but the, the point I'm making is that you're always the bridesmaid and never the bride. Yeah, at that point in my life, I was always the other woman, and I thought at that point in my life that I was, that I had one up, because I knew mm -hmm. all the truths, and, but at the end of the day, I didn't have one up on anybody. Yeah. I played myself for like a good two and a half years, and it was like, okay, you know what, you got to So at least she's discouraging girls from oh, this no, no. life. This book isn't cute, and it's not pretty. Uh -huh. Don't do what I did. Do what I say now. Ja Rule was so impressed with you, he put $10,000 in your bank account the no, very ja, next day? No, Ja never did that. That was Shaq. Shaq. But that was before we had sex. He just did it as, okay... I'm going to be with you. And I he want probably did it so that you wouldn't do things like write, write about him in this book. <laughs> well, you know, Shaq was very generous with all his girlfriends mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's just a very generous. He believes that a woman so shouldn't. Remember him saying to me, a woman shouldn't wash her own dishes. And she shouldn't have to do certain things. Yeah. He just like to take care of women yeah. in his life. Any of his wives ever come up and try to beat your ass or anything? Um, I mean, John's wife one time in Vegas. Oh, he snatched snap. her up. He snatched her up and took her somewhere. We didn't see her again. Um, and um, like oh, it was wow. all the same trip where Gotti and I, Gotti, his wife, John, his wife and I was there at the same time uh -huh. you know and that happened one time servicing the men secretly when the wives went to bed yeah that's oh, how that's damn, how cause that you, was because you'd be in the same hotel I'd be in the same vicinity a lot of times and I had already been prepaid or you know whatever and even like months in event and just when someone takes care of you you just, you know, when you're in the situation that I was in and not making the right decision mm -hmm. and being foolish, you just end up being there. Sometimes I wouldn't even know that the wives would be there. Mm -hmm. And that, that Vegas trip, I was shocked. They were at the, at the tables, and I'm like, oh, my God. And, I, you know, and it was just a time in my life where I was just so disgusting. It was just, it Here's was Here's a banana. Point. Here, you peel it. Show me what you do. No. Come on. Oh. I'm not going to do Why that. not? Because I'm not going to do that. Oh, don't act clean now, Superhead. Come on. I'm not going to do that, Wendy. I'll do it, Miss Honey. Here you go, Miss Audie. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I have some chocolate for some Japanese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying so, I'm clean. So, I'm just saying that. You know, and I do everything really, really super, and I'm really good at having sex, and Mila's very, very you, happy in case anybody was you wondering. You prefer to swallow, or oh. you prefer to be splashed in the face, prefer, in your hair? I prefer neither. I prefer, I prefer neither. What do you do? You hold it in your mouth, and you can spit it out? No. At, at this point in time, I don't take any fluids at all in my mouth. Well, not at this point in time. Uh, we'll talk about, okay, then you're like two years ago. Three years ago. Two okay. years ago was a little, a little See, I thought it was fine. I was just trying to try to Well, between five to three mm -hmm. years was kind of, you know what I mean, ago. Oh, anyway, um, it's hot did you Did you prefer, uh, at the time, of the serious hold'em? Okay, well, look, yeah, at, the, well, yeah, at, at my, my height of hold'em, uh -huh. um, not really... Don't like it in my, didn't like it in my face, in my hair, my eyes. You mess up the weave. You got yeah. to wash. It's just right. too much. Right. Maybe in the mouth, spit it out. Oh. Never mm -hmm. swallow. Mm -hmm. But even then, that was probably only with Papa because I was very disease conscious and a lot of times we would use condoms. Okay, a Puffy. So he, you show up at the house. He kicks Fosworth Bentley out of the guest room. Kim, Kim, what, Kim Porter was in the house upstairs in the master bedroom? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Maybe someone. I think someone was up there. Merlin Santana. You say that um, you had sex with him like five days before he died. I remember that week. We didn't have sex. But okay. He came over wanting to, and I wouldn't because something. I could tell something was wrong. He he ate me out, but we didn't have sex. Oh. oh. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would want to go behind all that. Oh. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, it's it's quite frightening at this particular point. I mean, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying, Superhead? I've, I've had a lot of sex. I've had a lot of sex with a lot of different people. And the STDs. At, yeah. I've never had an STD. I've been very careful. The only time I haven't been careful is with the man that I have a child with. And then G rap. Yeah. Who you're still looking for for child support? The state of California is looking for G. About how much money does he owe you in that child? Oh, it's hundreds of thousands. Oh, it's, been, it's been a long time. And they incur 10% interest every year that you don't pay on top of what you owe already. So now, so so where does your life go from here? I mean, you're with Bill Maher. You mm -hmm. say you're in love with him. Yeah. I couldn't possibly imagine mm -hmm. him s seeing you as anything other than his taste of black women. Mm -hmm. 
When's the last time you were involved in the hip hop culture, doing videos or, or you know? The last video I did was about three years ago. I believe it was a Joe Levert video, and I came out of um, my, that retirement just for that video because it was a clean cut video that I did as a favor to him. We were friends at the I time. Sh I share many listeners with Star of Star and Buck Wild. Okay. We were on the same radio station. He does mornings, night, afternoons in Philly. Mm -hmm. Same in Hartford. In addition, we're we're peers in this game. Mm -hmm. I know you walked out on him this morning. The listeners are telling me they also <clears throat> told me that. That, um, damn, I just drew a blank. Take your time. No, I just drew a total blank. Damn it, damn, damn, what a time for my echinacea not to work. Just relax. No, I can't. I can't because I'm looking up against the clock. Well, as far as the Bill stuff is concerned, you mentioned, Bill doesn't have a clean record either. And, I mean, it's, it's but, but, you know, oh, that, that's what it is. Yeah. He might not have a clean record, but he is not known as a wild whore. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's been with Heather Hunter and people that you wouldn't believe. And, yeah, and so Bill is as politically incorrect as I am. Okay. Why we get along. Okay. By the time our third date came, uh, he knew the whole story because I wanted him to know everything before the book came out. And when someone loves you, they love you regardless and because... This they, is what they told me about you with Star, is that he, they said that you, you're not... In, like, you made a comment about it, hating to do hip hop radio, mm -hmm. and that, um, no, that no, that's not what and I that you're pimping. No, he said that. It, well, he said, but are you pimping? And, I, and at that point, the I listeners said, at this particular and at that point, point, I said to him, whatever you want to say, because it was out of control at that point. And okay. I said, whatever makes you happy, okay. go ahead and say that. I, my, my thing was, I don't listen to hip hop. I don't listen to hip hop stations, especially not in Los Angeles. I don't think that they're the best. It, you know, I think New York is a little better as far as music and content is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I just don't find the music particularly appealing at this point in stage in the game. I listen to a lot of oldies and love love songs and Luther Vandross and stuff like that. Do you think? Do you think that uh, that you'll ever find somebody that you can really settle down with? And and I think I think Bill is as close as I'm going to get. If if it's not going to be him, it'll be no. It'll be it'll be him. I think if it's not him, it'll be someone extremely like him. But Bill is the most intelligent man I've ever met. And when we began dating, I realized I've been dating idiots all of my life. Is Coco still trying to call him? His ex girlfriend? No, Coco's not trying to do anything. Oh, oh he's handled Ooh. that. Yes, everyone's handled that. And what do you mean? It, no one's, I mean, the lawsuit, it was all very inappropriate, and I think that it shows what she was really after. Mm -hmm. I don't need Bill for financial purposes. I don't need him for anything. He just loves me. Even, even if we were just friends, he just loves me. And I love the fact that How did you meet him? I met him at a magazine party in the corner by himself, and I just kind of bumped into him. We started talking, and he made me laugh. I made him laugh, and we've been laughing ever since. And it's just, you know when you've got something when a man tells you every single day how smart you are, how proud of you he is, how, how much he loves you, and I've got that. You know what I mean? And whether you believe it or not, whatever. But I, I'm in love, and I know that man loves me back. All right, everybody. The book is called Confessions of a Video Vixen. <clears throat> Karen Steffens, a.k.a. Superhead. Listen, I want to thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we finally got a chance to do it. And uh, I wish you well. Thank you very much. Let's just finish off Superhead, and I don't want to talk about this anymore. I've got it on the best authority you all could possibly. <sighs> Method Man is Papa. Hmm. Official. And there is a daughter. Why do I still feel like I am obliged to say alleged? All right, I'll say alleged just to, you know, appease Mr. Sutton and, uh, you know, the other the other people who hold all the purse strings here, the big W, VLS. Um, so Method Man and his wife have um, allegedly a daughter that Superhead and Method Man had together. Now, Art, if you would please leave the room, locate the Superhead book, and come back so we could do the passage where she describes... The, I haven't read the book yet. Now, I don't even have any interest in reading the book, but you were telling me in the book as she described Papa, Papa had like chinky eyes or whatever you were telling me right 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 here yeah, chinky here yeah, chinky. all right no no fan out go get the book is oh. the book here well mine is at home but i'll see if somebody got a copy in the back all right well and do it fast and and come back quickly i'm losing interest quickly anyway okay so that's one thing the book deal was for and i'll say alleged to all of this okay so we could just lay this to rest I don't. I didn't ask her what her book deal was for. Um, I'm in the book world. Um, 
it's actually it was actually for a lot lower than I thought, but I definitely knew that it wasn't for seven point nine million dollars. I don't even know where that came from. I never heard her say that. Her book deal was for allegedly, I'll say again, fifty thousand dollars. Allegedly. She uh, did have sex for $400 with Magic Johnson, allegedly in the parking lot of UCLA. He offered her 1000 if he could, well, raw dog it. Yeah, I've been told, listen, listen, I know people, or should I say two people. I mean, I can be challenged on this, but just remember, all the fallout, all the DNA tests, you're not going to win that easily with me. So, you know, just, just, and I don't want any sidebar phone calls from no damn body. Shaq never deposited $10,000 in her bank account or purchased furniture for her. He rented her a car and gave her a used TV. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Tigger allegedly, well, we already talked about Tigger. Mm. And the bloody sheets and the ripped up booty. She was with allegedly Ludacris and Nelly, but never named their names in the book. And guess what? Mm. And you get the bomb ready. G-Rap may not be the father. She's now running behind white boys in Hollywood, including this Bill Maher. Uh, the Owen Wilson is also on the uh, voicemail and never called her back. Um, allegedly, there is abuse towards Junior. Allegedly. Um, and I will also say that I got it on good authority. But I'll throw in allegedly again that allegedly this book is 80% lies. Tabloid. And, oh, and by the way, shout out to Puffy and Fonsworth Bentley. Oh. Uh, because I know all about you two. I'm, 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 I'm. And then Superhead's participation. But I know all that you two. Hit whatever button you, you see appropriate over there. How you do? How all how right. You do? <laughs> Now, can we please stop talking about this? Can we please just put it to rest? Please, celebrities or whatever, don't call and challenge me on this one. Because you try to come for me and, 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 and it's going to be real ugly. I've been doing this damn near 20 years. You know, and, I, and I'm not crazy. And I'm not just talking. I'm saying. Allegedly. <laughs> that's no kind of de- that's like a man they treat her like a street urchin over there her label what label is that let me avoid them like the plague cheap bastards what is that Armistead books that's a subsidiary of uh jeez louise fifty thousand dollars to write to write a book and purge your story i wish somebody would I'm not with H.R. Simon Schuster anymore, but you know what I'm saying. Thank you for uh, for Ooh, treating the sister proper doing? like to purge my soul. You know what? She would be best going with the white boys now, though, because she's got no more future um, on this side of the tracks. She, you know, the, the wives club wants to beat her behind. The men want to beat her behind. I'm sure Method Man and his wife right now are going through it. And the the little girl, Nyla. And she never denied having a daughter. And I'm telling you on good authority that... Ah! Hey. Allegedly. I'm just saying that for Mr. Sutton. Allegedly. And damn, Magic. Allegedly. And Shaq, I mean, you look the best in my final report from my good authorities because, you know, for her to be saying that, you know, she did you so good and then you deposited $10,000 in her bank account because, you know, she said compared to your size that your Richard was, you know, just average. She was expecting something monstrous like your biceps or something like that, I guess. Wow. But um, you came off the best because you ain't a trick. You didn't give her no $10,000 damn dollar. Good. He rented her a car. She said $10,000 and purchased her furniture. What a hoe. He rented her a car and gave her a used TV. 
Oh, Tigger, I guess you, between you and Method Man, you all are probably like the the one the, uh, drop a bomb, a double bomb. And hey, Fawnsworth, how you doing? I don't know why she kept Ludacris and Melly's name out. I mean, she dropped everybody else's name. Ja Rule, she ripped apart his household. And she could say all she wants that, that Mrs. X knew and all like that. Nobody wants it to be out there. Even if you do have that kind of arrangement, you want it to come out of your mouth, not some, some tramp's mouth. And she needs to run behind the white boys. But guess what? Don't nobody want you. You are used goods. And don't nobody want you after you've been running after dirty rappers, too. You know how they already feel about us in general. So now to find out that, you know, you were with dirty rappers. Ugh. She said she loves Bill Maher and that they're in love and stuff. Guess what? Bill Maher doesn't even like kids. So how is she going to ever incorporate in Bill Maher's life? She has her son. Oh, I forgot. Mm hmm. She doesn't spend that much, well, allegedly. Don't nobody want you, um, Superhead. I feel sorry for you um, in conclusion. I feel very sorry for you because you are looking for love and you've soiled yourself for any love. Black, white, young, old, whatever. You would be best off finding an old, feeble man like Anna Nicole Smith did. And even she wasn't. I'm not even comparing you to Anna Nicole Smith because compared to, to you, she looks like a saint. But, you know, some feeble old man who just, you know, and she, if he's feeble and old, he probably can't even get the best usage out of the super head. You know what I mean? I told her to get her C cups zhuzhed up to a double day. Ooh. You know, I mean, wear it. Like, why are you even wondering? You know, you got your money. You're getting your money a certain way in life. You need to, you know, zhuzh it up. Well, I guess that's my final report, you know, on, on the Superhead. I mean, you know, I have no more to say except for, damn, all this for $50,000. Jeez, when people want to kick your ass, you know, people want to kill you. Your meal ticket, looking at you probably all crazy. Now, I'm sure Bill Maher is too, although he probably doesn't lounge in the Groydian radio, so she might have been able to hide all this from him. But, um... Mm -mm -mm. All this for $50,000 when she pays taxes on it, even if she gets it put into her company. You know, if she's formed a company, she, what, walks away with $30,000? Mm. Jeez Louise. Was it really worth it? The well, only thing the L.A. knows about the book is if they happen to be listening to the show, you know, the four-hour show on 100.3 The Beat on my show. Yeah. But I'm sure Sally is locked jaw on it. No, you know what? Sally probably didn't lock you on it because Sally was mentioned in it just as her friend, not as sex. But I don't believe any of that because she mentioned Magic Johnson as a friend and not as sex either. But you know why she did that? Because, you know, the monster. Then she'll be associated with two things. Snitching, ho snitching slash hodum, and the monster. And she said she never got any STDs. Just one big old king crab sitting right there on Ooh. her on her on her cat trap, mm. <laughs> just munching away. Ow. <laughs> oh, super head for the seafood lover in you. <laughs> Any parting words on this? Okay, good. Case closed, people. I mean, I know it's going to reopen again on Monday, just for a moment, because Heather Hunter's coming to the show. Mm. I've never seen the Heather Hunter. Uh, do what the Superhead is doing. And Heather Hunter is legendary. She is the black Jenna Jameson. She, you know, uh, and she admits, thank God, to her porn starishness, whereas the Superhead said, damn, am I opening the Superhead file again? Yeah. All right, just one more time. Superhead said, what's that man's name, Mr. Who? Mr. Long? Marcus. Oh, that's from Black Sheep. No, Mr. Marcus, the porn star, you all. So Superhead talks about everything in her book except for the, the list that I just ran down to you. It's quite a bit, though. We just we cracked a big case. Oh, yeah. But Mr. Marcus, right? So in her book, she says, yeah, you know, she's writing in her book. I was in a movie called... Mr. What? Marcus's Neighborhood. No, no, no. The one with... Um, the man Apart with Lorenz Tate. With Lorenz Tate called The Man Apart. Right. And, um, and she, that's all she adds to her acting credits. So I... Ha, ha, 
swoop down and say, what about Mr. Marcus's neighborhood where you starred as his lover named Honey? Yeah. Which, by the way, the whole show has multiple copies of it. And to prepare for the Superheads interview, we were all assigned to watch it the night before the interview, not all together in our separate areas. Yeah. I was home with my cheese plate. And, and I was ate. home with my napkins. He, she, he, Art was home with his napkins. I guess Trev Hollywood was home, you know, whatever. Mm. And um, so Mrs., Mr. Marcus, so you know what she said? And now Mr. Marcus is, is like, a, you know, he's a legendary underground type black he's porn big. star, would you say? Is he big? See, I don't watch all that. Like, I don't get all, if it's not on the Spice Channel, like, I'm not out purchasing and connoisseuring. And yes, I have seen Heather Hunter, but who hasn't? That's like, you know, somebody who hasn't seen Jenna Jameson, mm. you know. Um, but she says, she, she got kind of caught off guard, and she said, um, yeah, well, he was my boyfriend when I first got to L.A. or something like that. And I didn't realize that we were being taped when we were having sex. She judged over that real quick. But because of time constraints here with the show and my breaks and having... T I mean, that's why I love the bonus hour, because I can luxuriate in conversation. How long have I been talking already? 15, 15 minutes and 30 seconds, see? I have to get it out quick. I, I don't have time for all this back talk and back talk and back talk, you know? I mean, if we're going to talk again, then, you know... She can come back up here for her second book. This might be the only place that she can promote it. I mean, if she dares. I felt as though I was a lady, you know, but I also, uh, you know, gave, gave my opinion. At the end of the interview, I did pull out a banana and asked her to show me what she does. And she tried to get all church on me. Oh, that is a life I put in my past. Well, I bet, I bet you did. You were forced to go into retirement because no, nobody wants that anymore. You're a snitch. So even your repeat offenders, Ja Rule with his head fan full of E-pills and all them. You know, Irv Gotti and them. I guess, you know, the Magic Johnsons and, and whatnot. Now they know that you snitch. And if I was Method Man's wife and in her position, and shout out to her. I, I know her through phone conversation and stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to um, say more, but I can just say that she... She and I have spoken before, and she seems to be a really nice lady. And from what I understand, she's um, she's not doing well right now. Um, I'm not sure of what form of not doing well, but you know, she's she's a nice lady, and she and I have had you know conversations, and uh, you know, this is. Mm, Yeah. I mean, she's going to live. It's not like that. All right. But, I, you know, just shout out to Method Man's wife. And if I were you, in, in your particular position, you know, where he was your love from way back in the day. And, you know, you are a stay-at-home mom. So, you know, you're, you're not, you don't have a means of a career and to, you know, continue on with your life to luxuriate and stuff. And, and if, if, you know, if, if, if my husband was a rapper and, and, you know, allegedly had a baby with Superhead, the best thing to do would be, you know, not take it out on the baby, bring that baby into our home, let's adopt it, because that would eliminate all visitation for the Superhead to get super on her knees again with my husband and perhaps produce more and all like that. And that would be a way of just putting Superhead right over there and now incorporating the little girl into the family and then just keep it like that. It's almost worth admitting to if allegedly... It's true. It's almost worth admitting to. Because it just puts that, it just puts Superhead on, on, um, lock, kind of, uh, you, you know what I mean? And it stops a witch hunt of, of who is the daughter's father and all like that. But, you know, allegedly. Shout out to Method Man. Please don't bother calling. Please. I, please. G-Rap said he may not be the father. And now, you know, it's on good authority that, hey. Maybe not. She won't take a test. Art was sharing that with me. Not that Art is one of my two main sources, but. No. Um, she won't take a test. So why won't you take a test? What, what do you have to hide? Why won't you take a test? And I know she said to me that um, he's the father. Uh, the little boy looks just like him. But you know what? Sometimes, like, if, if a woman picks a particular type, 
Like, like I like a type. Um, uh, you know, I love all types of men, all all shades and all you know, baldy braids, you know, all like that. But I do notice that there is a similarity between my lover, LL Cool J, who, despite everything, I think is a good-looking man. There's a similarity there in looks, in tribe looks, in in a tribe. Listen, in a tribe, Mac Ten. There's like a similarity there that if I had a baby by any one of the three or any one of these two, say I jumped off with LL, I could pass the baby off as being, you know, my husband. You you understand what I'm saying? I'm just sticking a tribe. Yeah, you stick with a tribe. Unless unless uh, they're paying, in which case you get stuck by who has the money. Huh. But four hundred dollars for a phone bill in a parking lot, hooker, oh. please, <laughs> and a thousand dollars to run raw. Do- mm. Mm-hmm. And Owen Wilson don't want that. Uh, or second thought, maybe he would because he is not. He's he's like a real white boy, white boy, and probably has no idea what the superhead is truly all about. Mm. Well, you better capitalize on white Hollywood while you can, honey. You have between now and perhaps Christmas to run through as many people as you possibly can and get that second book turned out by next season. Because them boys aren't running back to you the way the hood is right now. Because you got angry, just regular women. You got angry hip-hop wives. You've got angry hip-hop artists and, and the likes. I mean, like, like, like you, know, you know what I mean? Mm. So you can get away with this out there in Hollywood, you know, with the white people.